All right, tech family, it's here. upgraded HP Omen with the Ryzen 5000 series CPU and the Nvidia 3000 series GPU. If you don't know the HP Omen, it was one of the standout gaming laptops from 2020. It really got the basics right. It packaged a comfortable keyboard, a high quality screen, a powerful Ryzen 4000 series processor in a chassis that ran cool and quiet. And to top it off, you could purchase one with a decent 1660 Ti graphics card and a fast refresh rate 144Hz screen for around $1,000, US a simply epic deal. There were of course other configurations, even some that included Intel processors. But the config I mentioned was really the one to get. It was a standout as it had the most bang for the buck. In fact, I have my personal one right here. Anyway. Unfortunately, last year manufacturers were not matching AMD Ryzen 4000 series CPUs with anything higher than an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060. So you really couldn't get a powerful gaming laptop with an AMD CPU, which sucked. The good news is, this year it seems manufacturers have come to their senses. Over here is the new HP Omen for 2021. It has the Ryzen 5800H CPU paired with an NVIDIA RTX 3070. These are powerful components, and I can't wait to see if it gives me the performance boost that I've been looking for. You see, if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I've been using the HP Omen for 2020 as my main powerful laptop. For the reasons I stated before, it's just such a good all-round gaming laptop that doesn't have the issues that many of the others do, i.e. warm feeling keyboards, dim screens, lots of fan noise, blah blah blah. I was originally hoping to use this laptop for my video editing. I even upgraded it to 32 gig of RAM and put in an extra 2 terabyte SSD. But the 1660 Ti graphics in last year's model just wasn't powerful enough. Editing wasn't smooth and rendering was taking super long. So I'm really eager to see if this model is powerful enough. Now, since this is a laptop that I bought for myself, I opted for the 1920 by 1080 144Hz screen, not the newer 2560 by 1440 fast refresh rate one. I did that for a couple of reasons, both based on my recent review of the Asus G15, which I'll link in the description below. I didn't feel that the RTX 3070 would be powerful enough to make use of both a fast refresh rate and a high resolution panel, especially in AAA games. Plus, in my specific use case, I mainly use this laptop plugged in to an external monitor. And in the rare occasions where I don't, the 1920x1080 144Hz panel in this laptop is good enough. Side note, HP was going to send me a review unit with the newer 2560 panel, so I was hoping to show you both of them today. But as luck had it, after I purchased my unit, all configurations went out of stock, even for HP to send me one under their review program. Since this one is my personal laptop, I only bought it with 8GB of RAM and I upgraded it myself to 32GB running at 3200MHz speed. I'll place a link to the kit I used in the description below. By the way, I found the battery super hard to unplug, so I took a risk of leaving it plugged in while upgrading. Alright, let's get straight into performance as the new CPU and GPU is really what's changed with this laptop. Now, the laptop comes with two performance modes configurable in HP software, balance and performance. I tried both in my tests. Let's start with Geekbench, which tests a variety of everyday performance tasks that you might run on your laptop. For single core, you can see that the new HP Omen is on top. It improves on its predecessor by a whopping 24% and it beats out the best Intel laptop in my comparison by 17%. In multi-core performance, the new Omen is again on top, 17% ahead of last year's model and 15% above the best performing Intel laptop. Now, Let's take a look at Cinebench R23, which maxes out this CPU's performance. It is slightly beat out by the Ryzen processor in the Asus G15. By the way, props to HP for getting their 5800H CPU to perform neck and neck with the supposedly faster 5900HS in the Asus G15. This laptop is still 10% faster than last year's model and a whopping 31% faster than the nearest Intel competitor. Also, please note that the higher performance profile is around 10% faster than the balance power profile. I'll be mentioning this later in the video. Under sustained load, where I ran Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes on repeat, you can see no drop in performance for the HP Omen. This indicates an effective cooling solution. Guys, these are some really good scores. 
Looking at temperatures you would actually feel when using the laptop under load, you can see that the HP Omen is the coolest feeling gaming laptop that I've ever recorded, both on the keyboard deck and the underside. Now fan noise is interesting. For lightweight tasks the laptop is very quiet, which is great. Under full load on the balanced performance profile it's also pretty good at 50 decibels, but under the performance profile the laptop is horribly loud at 62 decibels. You are definitely going to need a really solid pair of headphones to cancel that out. I personally would not take the trade-off of using that mode for the extra 10% of performance it delivers. This laptop is already plenty fast on the much quieter balance profile. I would only use the performance profile if I'm doing something like a video render that I can leave the room. By the way, ignore the supposedly quiet score here from the Razer Blade Advanced. That score is rather misleading as that laptop's fans are very high pitched. So even though it looks quiet on the chart, its fans are extremely audible. The HP Omen doesn't have that issue. And here are the CPU temperatures when under full load. As you can see, this CPU runs hot. Unfortunately, the days of Ryzen processors running significantly cooler than Intel may be behind us. Onto some application benchmarks. For PC Mark 10, which tests common office tasks, it's another epic score for the HP Omen. Anything over 6000 is really exceptional. Onto video editing, on the Puget benchmark, which tests a variety of video editing tasks in Premiere Pro, it's another win for the Omen. This is a very special win, by the way, as it's not uncommon for Premiere Pro to favor Intel processors. So the fact that this laptop beats out the Razer Blade Advance with its more powerful 3080 graphics and Intel CPU is amazing. Now, as this laptop is the one I plan to actually use to export my YouTube videos, I wanted to test how it performs on one of my most recent ones, the Asus G15 review. This is a super important test for me, as we often export videos many times as the videos are reviewed and we find things in them that we'd like to fix. Any time saving here would be very significant for this channel. Freed up time can be reinvested in producing more new content for you. As you can see, this new HP Omen completely annihilates last year's model with the much lower 1660 Ti. This video used to take me 56 minutes to export on that laptop. Even my MacBook Pro 16 would take 31 minutes. Well, this new HP Omen does it in 15. This is massive for me. On to gaming benchmarks, as this is of course a gaming laptop. TimeSpy was very good and a huge step up from last year's model, where the GPUs in Ryzen laptops were limited to mid-range ones. It didn't beat out the RTX 3080 in my Razer Blade Advance though, or the 3070 in my Asus G15. Firestrike, which is an older DirectX 11 benchmark, showed this laptop performing very well, head to head at the top of the list with the RTX 3080 in my Razer Blade. Honestly, any score above 20,000 in this benchmark is phenomenal and would have been considered an absolute miracle a couple of years ago. Lastly, Port Royal, which tests the new ray tracing capabilities. As you can see here, the RTX 3070 in this laptop is a substantial step up from last year's RTX 2070. When we now switch to performance in Battlefield 5, a AAA game from 2018, you'll see that this laptop is finally good enough to use ray tracing in an actual game at ultra settings. I got a solid playable 60 to 80 frames per second on default performance, and on the louder performance profile, I got 75 to 95 frames per second, which is really great. I have to say it, this game looks fantastic with ray tracing on. When we turn off ray tracing, we start to get some really good frames. As you can see, I was able to make solid use of the fast refresh rate panel, and to be honest, opting for the 1080 screen for this game was totally fine. That resolution on a 15 inch display looked very crisp for gaming to my eyes. Obviously, for something like coding, where you are focusing on much smaller fonts all day, every day, I would have preferred a higher resolution one. But as mentioned, I'll be using it plugged into an external monitor anyway. So. As you can see, the performance of this laptop has really gone from winning in a couple of multi-core CPU benchmarks to being outstanding in pretty much everything. This really is a monstrous step up in performance from last year's model, particularly when it comes to graphics intensive tasks like gaming and video editing. Now, when we look at the rest of the laptop, not much else has changed. I mean, check out the brightness and colors of the display. It looks like the same panel as last year's model. In fact, the only thing I could find that's changed is these extra rubber nubs to the right and left of the keyboard. These provide a bit more support for the lid from flexing when it is closed. Although that's a welcome change, I really would have liked to have seen more updates, as there are several things that I found a little frustrating as a regular user of this laptop. It still has a slow SD card reader, for example. This really sucks for someone trying to do video editing work. I personally don't use it due to its slow speed and use a faster external one. This is annoying and I really feel should be unnecessary. Also, 
I feel it should have a second USB-C port in 2021, not a mini display port. I mean, heck, you can run display port over USB-C connection anyway, and more and more devices are switching to USB-C. For example, my external webcam, which I use because the webcam in this laptop sucks, uses USB-C. Since I'm already using the single USB-C port in this laptop to plug into my external monitor, I had to get an adapter for the camera. And speaking of the webcam, it's still garbage. Also, it would have been really nice if the USB-C port supported charging in 2021. I did test Ubuntu Linux on the laptop and found the keyboard trackpad sound function keys all worked, but there was an issue with the graphics drivers. I was only able to run the display at a shockingly low resolution. Also, when I closed the lid, the laptop didn't sleep. Please note though, I only did a quick test running off a USB key on version 20.04 revision 2 of Ubuntu. I did not fully install it and therefore didn't update to the latest drivers. Lastly, unfortunately, the poorish manufacturing still seems to be a thing. My unit came with a minor defect just as one of my prior omens did. The trackpad has a little dent to it that you can feel when you rub your finger over it. Look. At the end of the day, this is still a great laptop. In fact, for the price I paid of $1,349, US I'd say it's outstanding. The performance, as you have seen, is phenomenal. It runs very cool to the touch, it's pretty much dead silent for casual tasks, the keyboard continues to be one of the more comfortable ones I've used, yes, it's still a chunkier gaming laptop that looks a bit dated with its big chin, but there are just no major issues with this laptop. As of this review, I believe HP continues their trend from 2020 into 2021 of being the best bang for your buck gaming laptop in town, and I highly recommend it. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. And please join me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Discord. Links in the description below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.